guys what's up welcome once again guys to another video thanks as always for tuning in and you know let me take this opportunity to you know let you guys know how appreciative i am for you to take time out of your busy schedule to join me in another video all right and um as usual let me remind you to like the video share the video subscribe if you haven't already done so hit that notification bell and, and also comment guys comment and let us know what you think about the video um something i have said that you may or may not have agreed with or you know whatever something maybe in the in the video that you know caught your attention that maybe i, I didn't catch up on so you know just let me know what you think about everything all right so guys um i have two stories two rather sad and unfortunate stories to, uh, that i'm coming to you guys with um so just you know sit back and 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 you know watch the video watch the entire video and um you know let me i'll let you know what's going on all right so the first one guys that i'm coming to you with is um a 13 year old um teen was shot and killed right and um you know it's 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 you know kind of a, a it's it's not kind of it's a really sad story you know unfortunate so um a man who shot and killed a middle-aged school student who he thought was trying to break into a car has been arrested and charged with murder jason lewis who is 41 years old turned himself into the police in washington dc that's on tuesday tuesday morning after authorities obtained a warrant for his arrest Metro metropolitan police chief robert conti said during a news conference lewis an employee of dc's department of parks and recreation is facing one count of second degree murder while armed according to court documents so the charge is, the charge comes weeks after lewis shot fatally shot 13 year old karen blake outside his home early in the morning on january 7th lewis who is a licensed concealed carry permit holder told police that he was in bed when he heard noises outside and observed someone that appeared to be tampering with vehicles lewis told police that he had called out hey what are you all doing before karen beelined at him in a full sprint to the front of his gate according to an affidavit filed with the complaint lewis allegedly said he then fired his weapon twice striking karen but according to the affidavit lewis actually fired his weapon at least three times conti told reporters that the first shot which he said lewis did not mention to police was fired at a gateway vehicle that was parked nearby and not at karen the vehicle then began to reverse through the alley karen started to run toward the car but then charged changed his direction and ran toward the sidewalk so according to the documents karan is L is heard yelling at in surveillance camera camera footage i am sorry please don't no i am a kid and i am only 12 numerous times at lewis as lewis fired his weapon at the child images from the surveillance footage included in the affidavit showed lewis standing at an open gate at his home with his left arm extended toward the sidewalk and um that's a little boy karen blake right there guys and um you know this is him at school you know it's and this is um lewis right here you know you can see oh his arms extended you know um getting ready to fire um guys it's you know sometimes Sometimes it's best to 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 um you know think first because uh, you know, before you fire a shot you know what I mean because especially when it's outside you know that's a part of the the, the gun license um law that a lot of people don't understand or don't get right because if the person is intruding inside your home then you you have all right to to fire you know and to protect your 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 family and yourself and and your 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 property inside your home 
But when it comes to a person outside, then that is where it gets, you know, really tricky and technical. You know, so everybody's life is gonna is gonna change at that point. So, you know, sometimes we have to just take a step back and 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 just, you know, calm down. Get that adrenaline down before we decide to go ahead and, and make that 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 decision, you know what I mean, that will change all of all, everybody's life. You know what I mean? Um, I, so he said, uh, I don't know if Karen knew that Mr. Lewis was standing where he was standing, but you know it's, a four, it's at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's dark out there, Conti said. And my question is, guys, um, what was he doing outside at 4 a.m. in the morning? A 12-year-old little boy doing outside at 4 a.m. in the morning, so... You know, and he wasn't alone, so he must have been. They must have been up to no good, guys. And you know, at parents, we have to do a better job at at, at uh, trying to control. And I said trying, because that's all we can do. Try, especially at those those ages. You know what I mean? Because any 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 anybody at, on, out on the street at that time of night walking around looking into people's cars they can't be up to no good you know what i mean so it's 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 kind of crazy you know and this incident um you know caused demonstration you know all over the place in washington and yes he made a bad decision of shooting but then again guys as i said you know parents have to do a better job kids you're old enough to, to, to go to go out and try to rob people's cars, break into people's cars and all of that stuff. So you're old enough to understand the circumstances of your actions. We'll come back to Auntie. And in this case, it's fatal. So you have no chance of coming back to, to you know, correct what, is, what, he, what he has been doing wrong. So Karen was transported to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The chief medical examiner of for the District of Columbia confirmed he died from multiple gunshot wounds and ruled his death a homicide according to court documents. So that's when that's that's when your your whole life changes, right? Because it's now deemed an a, a homicide. Homicide. Right? The police chief said that surveillance video confirmed that Karen and another unknown individual were peering into cars that were in the block that were in the block in front of where Mr. Lewis resides and they were going into the cars. However, he argued that the initial shot Lewis fired kind of put the chain of events into place that ultimately resulted in Karen's killing. Here we have a kid who is dead, who shouldn't be, he said. I would hope that anybody with half of a heart that would impact you in same in some way, shape or form or fashion, this young man shouldn't be dead. Right? So Lewis's attorney Lee Smith said he his client maintains he is innocent. But how can you be innocent? You already shot a little boy and killed him, right? So I mean it's up to the to the courts. To, to to decide your if you are innocent or not you can't be innocent you are not disputing whether you fired that shot or not so i don't understand that innocence anyway while this is a certain cer this is certainly a tragedy once all the facts as heard are heard i believe that a jury will find that there was no crime here simith said um, Mr. Lewis was as de de dedicated his career to mentoring and supporting youth in the District of Columbia, which only adds to how distraught he is over the death of Karen. The, um, Mr. Lewis and his family offer heartfelt condolences to Karen's family and other loved ones. Lewis has been placed on administrative leave from the city. When asked what took so long for charges to be filed. The police chief told reporters that officials were dealing with a self-defense claim that needed to be overcome and said detectives have been working around the clock on the case. He wanted to get to the bottom of this. I am not going to rush to judgment. We want to make sure that we, 
we did this right. Karen's mother, London Blake, London Blake, addressed the charges against Lewis during a news conference Wednesday, saying she hopes she gets justice for her son and that Lewis is convicted to the IS. Jason Lewis, he ain't no, he has, he ain't have no right. Blake told reporters he had no right. It could could have went a whole different way. During her comments, she addressed questions about why her son was out so early in the morning, saying that sometimes kids do things that they are not supposed to do and that parents have no idea about it, which is also true. What I can say is that Karen came from a good home, Blake said, and I tried my best with him. Everybody's like, what is he doing out at 4 a.m.? She continued, would you feel better if it was at 4 p.m.? A crime is a crime, and that's just that. He took my baby, my firstborn, and it's messed up. Lewis is currently being held without bond. DC does not have cash bail. However, Simit told the news he plans to file a motion of pre-trial release. Lewis is due back in court on February 13 for a preliminary airing. According to online records, guys. So, you know, um... Well, um, I will, his mom said he's from a good home, which I am not going to dispute that. So either he's, he has fallen into bad company, or she just thinks he's, he comes from a bad, from a bad, from a good home. I don't know. It's left to be seen, guys. But anyway, um, so the next story, guys, um, is another, you know heartfelt one and unfortunate only this time you know um fortunately no one has lost their life right so this one is a, a black woman was arrested right after she was attacked by a, a a white man but when the police was called she was the one that was arrested so that's the unfortunate part guys and you know, I have to say, there's no way of going around it or putting this thing, these things up. But you know, this is where you, you, where we see, um, where we see racism in its full force. So, Westminster Police Department has initiated an internal affair investigation after officers responded to a fight involving three black women and a white man. The women claimed the officers' actions were racially motivated. So there was a there was a viral a video that went viral on TikTok, guys, um, showing the, the 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 event what took place. Well, not the fight really, but you know, the, the ladies on there. Um, there is a a few footage after the fight, you know, but the ladies were there explaining what happened and witnesses eyewitnesses were were given their take on 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 what happened and you know it was it, it was it was she, they were saying it was self defense so um on saturday january 21 westminster police has, was called to a party city in the 9400 block of sheridan boulevard several people had been in physical altercation including three women in their 20s and a 74 year old man so guys, um, before I can, before I go any further, and oh, before I, before I even go any further, I'm, I'm, I saw this, and I'm wondering now if this, this kid, back to Karen Blake, this kid seemed to have been, uh, uh, maybe a, I should say a troubled teen, right, or a troubled kid because he, 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 he was 12 years old, and this was a missing. If you can see on the screen, critical missing, right? Um, and this was on this was this is dated Thursday, August nine, August nineteen, twenty twenty one, right? So um, I'm wondering. Then this is, and it says five thirty p.m. The time was five thirty p.m. guys. So I don't know if he had he had he was um, if he had you know left home and wasn't known. It wasn't known where he was or you know whatever but um it said the metropolitan police department is seeking the public's assistance in locating 
11 year old Karen Blake so there you go guys um I didn't even read it before who was last seen in the 1200 block of Brent for Brentwood Street northeast on thursday august 19 2021 the incident was reported on monday august 23rd 2021 karen blake is described as a black male four feet eight inches tall thin built with black hair and brown eyes he was last seen wearing a white tank top shirt black shorts and blue and white shoes um so i guess he was I don't know we don't know what happened but i'm just speculating here that maybe he had you know run away with friends or something like that you know these kids are sometimes you know so yeah it's, he seemed to have been someone that was you know kind of okay so anyway um this is the young lady that was arrested um so she um she said she had she had um you know it was her birthday and she went to party city to to pick up some stuff balloons and stuff like that so you know she um she parked her car at the front of the of the of the store with permission from the from the person in the store but then this this elderly white man you know took it up took it upon himself to 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 be complaining that she can't park and block the the i guess the curb or whatever it, it is called and you know he started taking pictures and she stood up in front the camp in the in, in front of his lens and um he grabbed her up punched her a couple of times and she started fighting back so um so according to police the situation began when the man approached the women about their car blocking the handicap ramp that led to the store entrance the man's wife uses a walker and that and was inside shopping he reportedly said he reportedly said the woman Thanks for blocking the handicap zone. Let me read that again, guys. He reportedly said to the woman, Thanks for blocking the handicap zone and attempted to take photographs of Charlene Gibson's license plate. The Party City employee said it was okay to park there for a few minutes while we load balloons in the car. I stayed in the car and turned my hazards on, said Gibson, who was picking up supplies for her birthday party. When Gibson exited the car to prevent the man from taking a photo, she says the man grabbed her jacket hard enough to rip it and punched her. She then punched him back. So, um, let me show you a few pictures, guys. This is the, the officer right here. As she was being arrested. And her, her, her friend was arrested um there was one way where she was showing there it is she was showing the jacket where, where it was ripped and she was saying it it's it's a really thick jacket so you know you must have grabbed it hard but um you know guys i could see if 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 you know they were just going into the store or his wife was coming out of the store and could not pass you know what i mean but why not just sometimes you know some everybody just needs to calm down guys you know what i mean cuz maybe she wasn't wasn't going to be taken as long as 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 you know for for his wife to come back out and can pass or anything like that but anyway um the man told police she knocked the camera away and punched him in the face and that is where she went wrong you can't stop somebody from using their own property to take pictures or videos or whatever. WPD says witnesses were not, who were not involved in the, in the situation reported conflicting information. One witness says the woman cornered the man and assaulted him. Another witness said Gibson was punched in the face by the man and the other two women came to her assistance. When we were tussling and moving around, my sister Amber was trying to get him off of me said gibson he was antagonizing us saying stuff like bring it on <laughs> gibson's friend nia Shea burns took out her phone and began recording when police handcuffed gibson as soon as police saw who was involved i automatically knew that it wasn't it was it doesn't matter if it was my fault or not said gibson when police went in the store to talk to him it was like they were talking to their equal 
like he didn't just punch a female in the face. Meanwhile, I am getting arrested. WPD says none of the officers actually witnessed the disturbance at the store. Officers ticketed the man and charged him with third degree assault, a misdemeanor. The other two women were charged with disorderly conduct, a misdemeanor. Gibson was charged with third degree assault of an at risk adult. A felony and and that was a felony and taken to jail. Colorado statute defines at an at risk adult as a person who is seventy years older or older. Just because I hit him back doesn't mean I should have got anything less than E or anything more than he did, Gibson said. This was self defense. He should have been arrested and handcuffed too after the Adams County District Attorney's Office reviewed police reports, witnesses' statements, even statements and evidence. Gibson's felony charges of third degree assault of an unris adult was dismissed. Um The misdemeanor charge of disorderly conduct was filed in its place. We want to bring awareness to this. We are tired of tired as black women dealing with this. We are supposed to be able to de depend on police, said Burns. We are tired of people telling us that we are pulling the black card or that it's always a black or white issue. If we were white women, I guarantee this situation wouldn't happen that way. Gibson and the women involved are seeking legal counsel. The Westminster, the Westminster Police Department says it's committed to providing quality police service to everyone. With respect to this incident, by policy, we have initiated an internal affairs investi investigation. This will include an examination of our policies, procedures and training. All information available will be reviewed by the complaint review team that consists of citizens and police command staff and guys we all know how that how that will end right nothing nothing is gonna happen you know and um i'm um i myself is not trying to pull the race card but yeah we all know how this is gonna happen because um word on the street is that you know they didn't drop the the felony charge until the media started getting it got involved and started asking questions right and you know as they were saying in the video it's the 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 um the reaction and body language and how the police was talking you know that that showed how how, how racist you know this this incident was right i'm just saying it like 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 it is in the video right and you know i must say everyone in in the incident had some fault to bear you know what i mean because one person can't fight and you know if if the if the man oh no matter how old he is if he had grabbed her punched her in her face you know he's he was wrong for doing that and she had a right to defend herself you know and the police came didn't make it in any any better how can you two persons in a fight and you arrest one not because he's old you know what i mean but anyway guys um thanks again for tuning in and please remember to like the video share the video subscribe if you haven't already done so hit that notification bell and you know comment guys comment let me know what you think all right blessed love peace